Welcome to Whiteboard Friday. Of course, the big news this week has been the climate change talks in Paris, where thousands of politicians and delegates have converged to try and nut out how we're going to keep emissions below the level that would lead to two degrees of warming. That's the, the amount that's defined by scientists and, poli and politicians as dangerous. The question that people have been asking us is, what's a fair contribution for New Zealand to make? Of course, we've been arguing through the blogs this week that New Zealand's contribution is a little on the light side and that some of the justifications the government have put up for our low approach, our lacklustre approach to reducing emissions, they don't quite stack up. But what is a fair contribution for New Zealand to make? That's what we'll look at in this Whitewood Friday. And the answer really depends on your perspective. Of course, if you're a developing country, you have a very different perspective to if you are a rich country. Let's look at the differences. Developing nations think that we should allocate the, the remaining amount of carbon dioxide on the basis of population, whereas rich countries think we should do it on the basis of emissions. You'll see what I mean. The total carbon dioxide budget remaining is about 1 trillion tonnes. So that's the amount we can chug out into the atmosphere before we hit that dangerous level of, of warming, 2 degrees. And New Zealand's contribution to that at the moment is about 35 million tonnes. That's how much we're, we're chugging out each year at the moment. We're just looking at carbon dioxide here. We're not looking at agricultural emissions like methane and nitrous oxide, and therefore we're also excluding forestry from the conversation. So really what we're talking about is how quickly does New Zealand have to get down to zero use of petrol, zero use of coal, those sorts of fossil fuels that, that we need to completely remove from our economy. Now, as I said, developing countries think we should allocate this carbon dioxide budget on the basis of population. Now, of course, developing countries have a bigger population, so you can understand why they'd want to take that approach. New Zealand is a tiny percentage of the world's population. We're 0.06% of the world's people. So if you divide up the remaining carbon dioxide budget and you assume that we continue to use what we're using right now, that gives us about 17 years of burning fossil fuels at the rate that we currently are. So even, the government, even though the government says that we have a very clean and green renewable energy sector, we still burn a lot of coal. Fonterra for drying milk, our coal plant in Huntley, which may be shutting down, and of course the big one, cars and transport. So 17 years when, by which we'd have to stop it entirely, but of course after 17 years just stopping using fossil fuels would be a huge challenge. So let's assume that we reduce a little bit every year right down to zero. And if we do that, that gives us 35 years, which incidentally is the year 2050, the year that we've promised to halve our total emissions by. Incidentally, if we look at this approach, it tells us that a fair reduction in uh, carbon dioxide by the year 2030 would be roughly 22%. So a lot more than what the government is currently promising. Let's look at an emissions approach. So the alternative, a developed country thinks we've got much bigger emissions, so we need more time to get those emissions down. New Zealand is 0.1% of global carbon dioxide emissions. So that works out at roughly 29 years of carrying on at the same rate, or 58 years if we reduce a little bit each year right down to zero. And that year we'd have to get to zero would be 2073. So as you can see, the idea of what's a fair rate of reduction depends on your perspective. Rich countries think emissions, poor countries think population. And some developing countries go even further. They say that because we've already chugged out quite a lot of emissions, we've already been burning a lot of fossil fuels, we should actually get down to zero as quick as we can because we've already made such a big dent in the global carbon budget. What's fair? It depends.